<laughs> uh, so a bit of green, a bit of green and a bit of silver. There you go. Okay, nice. So let's go. Okay, let's go. I'm ready. Hello, everyone. Please welcome nine times professional Latin world champion, seven times Blackpool winner, multiple German champion, the king of rhythm himself, Brian Watson. <laughs> Mr. Brian Watson, I'm so excited to have Thank you in my interview. Thank, Thank you. It's great to be here. And uh, former, many, many years ago, I had those titles. But, you know, thank you very much anyway for reminding me. It's such an honor to have you here. And, you know, you were an idol to me and all the dancers of my generation. And beside that, you were always respected and loved by your colleagues, by your rivals. So uh, I think how, that's how did you remain so humble? Because like all these titles, all these things, but you're still so human. Well, at the end of the day, we're all human, right? I mean, um, for me, it was always the case. I danced because I loved it. I had a great success, luckily, but the, the, the driving force was always the passion for dancing. The results came from that passion. So for me, it was always a priority to keep the passion alive. And still today, I still love to dance. So for me, of course, I had a lot of success and it was a great compliment that you paid. But um, the driving force was always passion for me. And as long as you're a dancer, I think, you know, even nowadays when I'm teaching, I'm still learning. So I think we can continue learning all the time. And that's why I love dance. It's like, it's affinity, right? I remember you posted one time on Facebook that a teacher develops during his studies. He studies goes on when he teaches, right? Sorry. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why I love it. No teacher or no professional knows all the answers. And that's why I like to work very much like when we go abroad and I like to watch other people's lectures and other teachers' lectures, because even though you talk about the same thing, maybe they see it from a little bit different point of view. So for me, this learning process, I loved. And I always said I'm like an eternal student. I, as long as I can study and learn new things, I mean, this is what keeps me excited about anything, really. And of course, my chosen thing about dance, that would be the best. Yeah. This is so cool, so inspiring. Also for a young generation, you know, nowadays, they really love you. <laughs> they, if they remember who I am, yeah? <laughs> they do, they do. And if not, I'm like, boom. <laughs> watch you know, the, 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 I, watch I, this samba. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story quickly. A um, couple of years ago, I went to Spain to teach. And you know, um, we had this uh, Brian Watson shoe, yes, from Ray Rose. And the students were asking, why are you inviting the shoemaker to come and teach us to dance? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Some kids that don't know me, they know me more about the shoes than they know about Brian Watson, the dancer. There no, you go. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get serious. Today our oh. interview is sponsored by, <laughs> I'm joking. It has been organized by a German dance organization yeah. And I would like to ask you, why are you involved in this organization? Primarily, I mean, I like to associate myself with, with any um, organization or people that love and promote dancing, how I think it should be. So for me, I think the main reason for me to join the German dance organization is one of my mottos in life is to be to be the change that you want to see. So if you want to see change, you should uh, be this person or you should lead by example for me. And for me, uh, GDO especially stands for something which I believe in. I believe in very strongly. I think it's a great uh, group of people with like-minded thoughts. And the primary reason for me is because they all have dance as the priority and not their own individual egos, doesn't come across like that, let's say that. Uh, anyway. But um, for me, the most important thing, I feel that their heart is true and I feel that dancing is the priority. And anything where dancing is the priority, I will always support. I see. So what is it that makes your heart beat faster when you see dance? When I see dance, when I see dance, for me, it's this, uh, perfect scenario 
where body movement and music come together. For me, this is, there can't be any more perfect synergy than these things for me. Always I would have loved to be able to sing, for example. And I think uh, to be able to sing, I think it's great. But when you see a great singer, for me, it always looks like the voice and the person are not the same. I don't know how to say that. Um, like you see the, like, like Adele, for instance, you know Adele? Yes. How she looks when you talk to her in normal life and when she's singing, it's like a completely different person, right? So for me, it's like Adele and the voice. And for me, dancing, it's about me doing the dance or the person doing the dance. That's why I think I love dancing because it's personal. It's uh, everybody hears music differently. Everybody experiences movement differently. And I think that's why I love dancing because it's so, especially Latin American and ballroom because it's so individual. We're not trying to be a swan or a prince or I don't have to, I'm, I'm Brian Watson doing the cha-cha-cha, you know? I mean, this is- this Cool, is nice, yes. So how do, do you judge a competition? What are the requirements that Brian was, Watson is judging? Primarily, I think why I love dancing, why I chose Latin American dancing is because of the music. So primarily music is huge for me when I'm judging, especially uh, not so much musical interpretation, but basic timing, for example. I think timing, if I, like when I teach, for example, and I say the timing is not good. Couples are like, oh, the timing. But for me, there's so many different layers of timing. When I talk about timing, I'm talking about how you time your own body, how you time your, uh, all the actions together, how you time these actions together with your partner, and how you can synchronize this with the music, this is the ultimate. Now, I think for me, when I'm judging competitions, I think, uh, number one, I have to take, the first criteria is which level of dancing I'm, I'm judging, whether it's junior or juvenile or youth or professional. For example, if you judge musicality or timing, you can judge different levels through, uh, how can I say? Yeah, you can judge timing through all these different levels of dance, let's say like this. So for me, number the, 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 the main, the first thing I have to find out is the criteria of where, who, who I'm judging. For example, if I'm judging juveniles, it would be much more um, uh, technically based, let's say like this. I wouldn't expect them to uh, have artistic interpretation, let's say like this. So it's much more uh, technical based like this. Obviously the, the higher up in competition ranking you get, I have the same, uh, This, but just on a much deeper level. So I try to stick to these fundamentals when I'm judging you, because unfortunately, when you start judging, nobody teaches you how to judge, right? They just throw you on the floor and say, judge. And it's like, <laughs> okay. It's scary then, to get all the numbers, you know, like sometimes I'm like, okay, count, count. <laughs> exactly. And then the couples in the first round, they come to you and say, how did you think I danced? It's like, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> oh, I didn't see that much. But um, yeah, so that's why I say it's always in context, isn't it? I mean, if you, in the first round, especially in major competitions, you have to make very quick decisions. You have five seconds or three seconds to say yes or no. So for me, like I said, on these, on these kind of um, competitions or scenarios, you come down to the fundamentals, timing, posture, connection. That's basically what you can see in five seconds. Yes or no. And then I of course, the more you go into the competition, the more deeper you can go into the understanding, still of the same subject, but more deeper. Yeah. And so how about, let's say the world's final, how do you judge really top couples? I think the most important thing for me is when we, when we ask to judge, we always ask before we judge to judge without fear or favor. Of, of any knowledge of past results like this. So number one, I try to remove my brain from anything, any preconceived idea I have of the couples I'm going to judge. Of course, when you come to high level dancing, you sort of know how the couples are, but I always try to treat it, for example, when I was dancing, I every competition, I tried my absolute best, whether it was the world championships, whether it was some, uh, I don't know, ranking competition in Northern Bavaria or whatever. I always tried my best. But for me, it was, 
yes, I tried the best I could. And I always, ex I always expected judges to judge me on that moment in time at what I was doing. So I tried to do the, the same when I'm judging uh, high level professional championships, finals, something like this. I tried to be as honest at that moment in time that I could, that I can be. I think it's boils down to the same criteria, musicality, musicality and partnering skills. Yeah, I think this is still my, yeah, why? Because I think it defines Latin American and I think it defines good dancing. It's very difficult to have good musicality if you don't have technical skills. It's very difficult to have good partnering skills if you're not really on balance or something like this. So for me, this is a little bit like a pyramid and all these underlying subjects the top of the pyramid would be musicality and partnering for me, yes. I see. Interesting. Um, so how do you see the generation of today? Do they do a good job concerning musicality? <laughs> uh, you're asking Brian Watson, okay? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, I have to be honest. I have to say, I think it can be a lot better. I think... In competition dancing, we can, we can get a little bit lost in the whole competition thing. And therefore, we're always comparing ourselves to the other people next to us or to the next round. Or I want to be in the final. Or when I'm in the final, I want to be fourth, third. So somehow this competition thing uh, takes too much priority for me at the moment. I think we've never had better... Um, just trying to choose the right words here. We've never had more rehearsed professionals ever than what we have now. That's for sure. I feel like sometimes if the partner might faint in the middle of the cha-cha, I think the other partner won't realize it until the end of the samba, you know, because they're so <laughs> well trained and they're so everything is like they it's wow. They can step off a plane after flying all the way to China and do go straight to the studio and do a show. And it's wow. From this, I think I'm so impressed because it's so well rehearsed. But at the end of the day, if I'm really honest, I think I don't, I think it doesn't matter which music they play, they will keep the same essence of what they're doing in the rumba, for example. I tried this a little bit because uh, you know we have our camp still that you obviously used to yeah. come to. And our, uh, for me, because music is so important, I always try to vary the rumbas, for example. And I found it such a shame that it doesn't matter what music you play, they still do the same choreography with the same feeling, the same like, Really? Are you not really listening to these fabulous layers of music? It's like, wow. And not they do their thing and double spin and pirouette up and down. Like I say, super clever, super rehearsed, but musically, yeah, not my best. At the moment. Kind of autopilot, right? Mm. Yeah, it's a pity. I remember you gave a lecture with Andrew Sinkinson and, and you were talking about the Brianizing the steps, you know, like still the things you learned when you were learned when you were small and rehearsed them like crazy were basic steps, but then to bring those hesitations and syncopations, I think kids could spend more time doing that, like discover. Learn yeah. the rules and then know how to break them, let's say, no? <laughs> yeah, but there has to, that's when, that's when uh, the, the teacher has to be a little bit more intelligent to actually realize when is the time for them to break the rules and when is the time for them to learn the rules, you know? And I must say, I was very lucky that I had very strong teachers that didn't allow me to break that many rules. And therefore, inside that, I had to look for the freedom for myself to express myself. Because I think we also have a danger that if, if everyone's too free and too um, can do their own thing, we kind of can lose the authenticity of Latin American dancing as well. So I think this becomes this goes down to the intelligence of the teacher a lot of the time. I think I think you're right. I think these the, the kids, for example, I don't want to be negative again, but I think uh, when you go to certain countries, you can see the kids are afraid to dance. And this is the scary thing for me, you know, because the teacher's on the side of the floor saying, head up, shoulder up, pull. And you can see the kids are like, <laughs> but I think, I think what I would like is that these kids have more fun learning to dance. 
And I think, like you said, if they have more fun about uh, different dynamics or different things that they can do and not, uh, you know, crack the whip every time they don't straighten the leg or something like this, I think seriously. So I would really like that these kids have more joy when they go to dancing. Yeah. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. This is so nice when, uh, when you see young dancers who actually really start to love, to discover love for dance, right? And then the teachers kind of implement it and support it, right? So, nice, nice. so what would be the advice of you to give to young teachers, young dancers? To the young dancer, I would say what I really wish for all dancers, and it's a difficult subject, but I really wish that they can dance without fear. To really, to really dance without fear, I think this is the greatest gift you can give a young dancer. So I think as a young teacher, to, to install enough confidence in these kids that they have no fear fear about making mistakes, feel about falling over, feel about looking silly or whatever. I think, yeah, if I can have one wish for young competitors is to really have no fear, have no fear. For young teachers, I would say, be careful. When I say be careful, it's because I'm still learning as a teacher. And like I said, we had, I had a lot of success. As, as a dancer, it doesn't mean I'm a great teacher. So at the end of the day, of course, I try to do my dancing the best. And what are you talking about? You're a fantastic teacher. I still <laughs> remember those things. I do it all the time. <laughs> Thank you, but you know, the feeling is no, no, uh, none of us start dancing because we want to be a great teacher, right? We all dance, start dancing because we love dancing. And then the next stage is when you get too old, it's like, oh, okay, what's left? I have to become a teacher. But yeah, so for me, if I can say to the young teachers, really try to try to learn the students, try to be more aware of the good things and the bad things. Be aware that when you criticizing them in one thing, make sure to build them up in another thing. That it's not all about uh, rules and regulations. And yeah, like I said, for me, the most when I'm especially with younger younger juniors and youths and everything. I, I would try to really let them have some fun when they're dancing. Let them fall over. Let them experience all, 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 all things that we learned about dancing. I think this is, uh, yeah, this is what we learned when we have fun, right? When you put on the music at home, and you swing around and you have fun. And like some people say, some people, you know, they say that you should dance like nobody's watching, right? Exactly. But this is another point because actually sometimes when you dance and nobody's watching, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> but the feeling is the feeling is right. You should have this freedom just to doesn't matter what the, what I think. I'm just gonna go for it. And I think this is a little bit back to the uh, the fear thing I talked about. But I think this is the when, greatest gift you can give a student. When did you start dance? How old were you? I was five years old when I started my first cha cha cha. Oh, cute! Uh, in South Africa. Started, yeah, in South Africa. And I remember when I started dancing, I went to my first competition. And in those days, they didn't make the shoes that small. So I had to wear a suit and I had <laughs> socks and I had sandals on for my oh, first no. ball competition. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. yeah. Okay. So it was fun for sure to watch. But actually, you know what? I had fun, yeah. I have to say. And every day when I went to practice, I used to go to practice in a, in a, in a t-shirt, shorts, socks, and my dance shoes. <laughs> is there a picture of this I want to see? <laughs> if there is a picture, it's not coming out, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need to yeah. do a bet or something, and then you lose, and then you need to play. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like I said, I used to have fun, you know? Yeah, I really did. I must say, this was one so as a child, did you enjoy to dance in front of people to perform? Did you enjoy that fact of being watched or did you prefer to be on your own kind of? Actually, it was funny. When I danced my first three or four competitions, I went one step onto the floor and danced right in the corner. <laughs> and then at the fourth competition, my dance teacher came 
He walked around the floor, around the floor. He took me, he put me in the middle and he continued to walk out like this. <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, uh. actually it's not so bad here in the middle. <laughs> so, so what helped you to develop confidence? What would you say? I think by really understanding what you do, I think this gives you confidence. I think if you, yeah, if you really understand what you do. Knowledge makes you kind yeah. of secure. So, yeah, because I just give, I can only relate it to my dancing career, for example. Yes. But like, for example, when, when Carmen and I, when we had choreography or whatever like this, I used to know all my timing, all her timing. I could dance my steps. I could dance her steps with music, with the correct, where the connection is because I wanted to know everything about the step. And the more I knew about the step, it was like the more confidence that I knew because I knew, okay, my time is not the same as hers here. She has to go to the left. I'm turning right with syncopated timing. She doesn't have a time, what she has normal timing, whatever. So, so this was, yeah, I had to know as much as I liked about, as I could about the steps. And then, for example, we used to change choreography. I used to hate it. Because then I had to learn all these things, everything, all again. <laughs> so that's why most of our most of our career we kept the same choreography because I had to know everything about the choreography. I also preferred always, you know. Then then you can go deeper somehow. You can absolutely develop yourself emotionally in the dance when the structure is so clear. You can know know by heart, you know. Yeah, but this I really have to thank, you know, Mr. Maxwell. Peter Maxwell was our teacher. And, a little bit for you too, right? And I must say, from the time I won the youth in, in Blackpool until I was in the final of the professional Latin in Blackpool, he did not allow me to change the choreography. Can you imagine? So when I danced youth, I had the same choreography in the professional, my first professional Latin final. No because way. I wasn't allowed to change the choreography. At the time, I was so mad because, you know, I was competing against Alan Tonsberg and, and Paul Killick and all these artists, and they all had this fantastic choreography. And I was like, I have to do this horrible old choreography. I was like, Ugh! but I must say, I'm so thankful to him for that because, like you said, I had these steps and I had to learn these steps and go deeper and deeper to bring the best out of these steps. And uh, I thought this was a huge lesson for me then. Actually, now, that's why now for me, well, not now, but when I was dancing, choreography was never a problem because like, if I can make these horrible steps look good, everything is better. <laughs> <laughs> but this was a big learning curve for me, I must say. I was very grateful for that, that's for sure. So interesting, wow. Yeah. All right, Brent. So I think we managed to cover all the questions. Would you like to add something? Something? No, I think, thank you very much for doing the interview. That's for sure. I think this is very interesting. I hope kids find it interesting. I'm not sure, but we can try. I think, uh, yeah, as long as I feel very confident about the next generation, I have to say, because uh, when I see, I haven't been teaching a lot with you, but I know you have a lot of knowledge. I have... Uh, been uh, witnessing some of the younger generation lectures and things around the world and I think uh, the next generation is going to do a much better job than our generation did so there you go I want to wow. I want to I want to endorse the next generation because I want to say they were great dancers and I'm sure they're going to be great teachers too it's so nice to receive you know this kind of belief and support from you from yeah, because remember, uh, we didn't work a lot together, but I remember how how important your the tracking of the feet were for you, for example, in the middle of the cha-cha. I was like, wow. And if you can give that much importance to your own dancing, I'm sure you're going to pass that on to your students. So, um, yeah, I think we're in safe hands. I'm happy about it. Thank you so much, Brian. It's a huge honor and... I can't wait to see those young dancers grow, you know, mm -hmm. and become new champions, new stars. Yeah. It's, okay. it's amazing, right? And that's what's so and nice about our dance world, isn't it? It's all these characters, everyone's changing, uh, all the fashion and the trends change, and it's like, yeah, always interesting. And let's hope that the situation of the organizations in the world, in dance world, will give a 
nice um, platform for the dancers to to grow and to experience the best career they can have, right? So. Absolutely. I mean, I remember, like I said, I can only talk about when I was competing. We never had a choice. We only had one association and we were brought up in the, um, how can I say, you either just shut up and continue, you don't open your mouth. And I think nowadays, competitors have a choice. I think choice is only healthy. I think, for example, I can say that the GDO, if we can lead by example, we don't have to go into fights with other associations because I think that by setting a very high example of how you want to be, I think people will have a choice and they will choose to follow you or they will choose not to follow you. But the most important thing is that we all have a choice. And I think this is a, a great gift for the couples at the moment because, for example, like I said, when I was uh, competing, we had no other association. We just had to put up and shut up and um, we didn't have a choice. So I think, I think it's only positive for the future. Now with much more freedom. Mm. All right. So let's come to okay. the quick, quick fire. fire questions and answer intuitively Go. very quickly. So, Mr. Okay. Brian Watson, Samba or Jive? Definitely Samba. <laughs> <laughs> Rhythm or melody? Actually, melody. Oh, unexpectedly. Yeah. Short hair or long hair? <laughs> With what you feel at the moment. Okay, just be in the moment, all right. Be in the moment. A shirt with crystals or pure? Uh, I go purity every time. Skills or talent? Definitely skills. Yeah. Meaning or fun? Oh, that's a difficult one. A fun meaning. Ah, nice. <laughs> Good one. Um, when in holidays, beach or adventure? A 100% beach. <laughs> uh, sweet or salty? Definitely salty. To live in nature or city? Ooh. Oh, that's also another difficult one. Instinctively, I would say, instinctively, uh, that's very difficult. <laughs> Two seconds, right? Because I was brought up in the city. So for me, uh, everything looks greener on the other side. So I would like to try to be in the country, but I think probably outside of the city. <laughs> I see, I see, I see, I see. And... Um... To dance, a competition or a show? Competition. Competition, wow, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a role model from me when I just started to walk on the dance floor and of course, still now. And I hope that the future generations still watch your fantastic dancing, which we all <laughs> love and respect and really Absolutely. i hope they're watching your dancing too and not only all the rhythm and all those things that you did but paying attention to the great detail that you had in your dancing as well because i mean i just remember one time i had to judge the international championships right and uh, i think i danced judged your final and i think i gave you first in a couple of dances and third in a couple of dances which was against completely against the form result and I got a lot of uh, um, complaints about it because apparently I was just judging the German couples first, which was not at all. So I just wanted to say, yeah, when, you, when you're dancing, you have to be committed, but when you're judging, you also have to be committed to what you believe in, so. Cheers to that. <laughs> Absolutely. I only have a tea, there you go, cheers. Thank you so much, Brian. No worries, it was a pleasure, anytime. <laughs> cool so we're done yeah it was good thank you very